Hi, today we're going to do day 5 of SBAC review series videos and that is on the topic of geometry and right triangle trigonometry. Number 14, Katie decides to paint only the walls of three bedrooms in her house. Each room has a door, closet, and a window. She is only applying one coat of paint to the wall. And let's take a look at the given information. Each room is given by 13 by 11 dimension with a foot ceiling. Each door has dimensions of 5.5 by 2.5. Each window has a dimension of 4 by 3. And each gallon of paint will cover 350 square feet. And the paint is sold in one gallon containers. So the first thing we need to know is how much of wall space total that she needs to paint. And notice that each wall, some of the walls have openings. So there's three bedrooms. But let's take a look at one bedroom, how much... Um, the dimensions are. So for these two walls here, the dimensions will be 13 by 8 because the ceiling is 8 feet. And then these other two walls will be 11 by 8. So the first thing we're going to just do is calculate the actual size of the walls in the room. And there is two times 11 by 8 bedroom uh, walls and there's two walls of 13 by 8 for a total of the area of the room which is 176 plus 208 that'll give us a total of 384 for the total of all the walls but we need to take away um, so 384 minus two doors there are two doors this one and the actual closet That'll be 2 times 5.5 times 2.5. Those are the dimensions of the doors. Minus one window. So this is doors and this is window. And that will be one window, which is only 4 by 3. And so in each room, the total number of square feet is 344.5 square feet. But we have three of those rooms, so it will be 3 times 344.5 for a total of 1033.5 square feet. And because we know that each can of paint is covers 350, so we're going to divide 350 to see how many can gallons of uh, paint we need. So that's about 3 gallons that we need. That's the minimum uh, number. Of gallons that we need. And that is the end of the problem. Number 15. Fernando is building a coop for his chickens. He makes sure that each chicken has at least six square feet of square uh, floor space inside the coop. For each set of dimensions, indicate whether the maximum number can be less, greater, or equal to 10 chicken. So we first option we have is a circular coop with a diameter of six which means the first thing we know is that the radius is 3. So since we know the area of a circle is pi r squared, we're going to substitute the 3 in, and that will be 9 pi, which is about 28.3 square feet. And since we know each chick needs 6 square feet, we divide it by 6, and we should have about mm, 4.7 um, chick. So that would be definitely less than 10. So this is a less less than 10. Um, and next one we have a square coop with the side length of 11. So the area of a square is actually side squared. That's 11 which is 121. Divided by 6 that's going to be about 20. So that's greater than 10. So this is a greater. And finally we have a rectangle coop with a width of 4 and a perimeter of 38. Well, we know that the perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width. So if we set the perimeter equal to 38, and we got twice the length plus twice, the width is actually 4, so that would be 4 and 4, which is 8. Solving for L, we're going to sub, uh, subtract 8, so we have 30 equals 2L, and we know the length is 15. So we can actually find the area of this uh, when we have the length is 15. That will be 15 length times width which is 4, and that's a total of 60 square feet. And dividing by 6, and that is exactly 10 um, chick.
chicken. So we can have 10 chicken. So this is equal to. And those are the answers for this problem. Next, Anthony is designing a truss which is in a shape of a triangle with sides of 4 feet and 12 feet. So we know that there's 4 and there's a side with 12. He is trying to determine possible links for the third side of the design. Determine an inequality that shows all possible values in feet for the link of the third side. So we're going to let the third side be x. And so if we assume that x is the shortest, then that will be um, using the triangle inequality theorem that any two sides add up will be greater than the third side. So x plus 4 should be greater than 12. And subtracting 4, we have x is greater than 8. And then if we assume that um, x is the longest side, then that will be the two shortest side will be 4 plus 12 should be greater than x. And we have 16 is greater than x. And then turn it around. If we actually uh, combine these two inequalities, we will have x is greater than 8 but less than 16. And so this is the inequality that we can use to represent the possible sides of the third side of the triangle. Number 17, Nicole is building a swing set on a flat surface. The legs of the swing set are each 96 inches long. The maximum distance between the legs should be 62 as shown in the figure. The horizontal support is 32 feet. So we're going to label 32 here. And this side, assuming it's 62, and it's going to be 96 inch for this side. How far is the top of the bar, uh, the top of the legs, Nicole should attach the support? So we're going to, we are being asked to find out how far this side is. So if we actually redraw the triangles into the smaller one and the big one, we have the smaller triangle with x and 32 dimension and the big one with a 96 and 62. Those are all inches. So we set up the proportion x over 96 should equal to 32 over 62. Cross multiplying, we have 62x is equal to 3072 and then divided by 62 we have exactly x equal 32 inches and so that over here it should be 32 inches for the support that's the end of the problem number 18 christine's grandfather gave her an old lamp that needs a new lamp shape she wants to buy some fabric to make a new lamp shape and the uh, given information the lamp shape is 12 inches tall and the diameter of the top is 8 inches, which means the radius is going to be 4. The diameter of the bottom is 14, which means the second radius is actually 7 inches. So we have a formula here, and we're just going to straight plug in to find out the amount of the fabric that she's going to need. So we're going to find the area for the fabric. So we're looking for this part of the shape. And so the formula is pi times r1, which we know is 4, plus r2, which we know is 7, times the square root of h squared. Well, we know the height is 12, so we're going to square 12, plus r2 minus r1, that's going to be 7 minus 4, n squared. And we're going to just simplify this. We got 11 pi in front, square root of 144, plus 3 squared, which is 9, and so we have 11 pi times the square root of 12 point, uh, actually the square root of 153. 153. And if we add, multiply all of that together, we have the approximate area is 427.45 square inches. And that's how much area the fabric will need to make the lamp shape. And number 19, Celine wants to buy an air conditioner for her bedroom. She has been told that the air conditioner needs to have 20 BTUs of thermal units per square feet to cool her bedroom. Her bedroom measures 11 by 15. Find the number of BTUs needed to cool her bedroom. So the first thing we know is that the area of her 
rectangular room is given by length times width, so that's 11 times 15, which is 165 square feet. So we know that each square foot needs 20 BTU. So we're going to just multiply 165 times 20 BTU. And so we're going to need 3,300 BTUs for the room. And that is the end of 19. And number 20, which type of transformation is described by x going to x negative y? So if we have a point x, y, assuming that it's going to be here, x, y, then x negative y would mean the point is going to end up being here is positive y and here is negative. And it's going to be over here. So it turns out that x negative y is actually a reflection across the x-axis. So the answer is a reflection across the x-axis. That is answer choice B, end of the problem. Number 21, consider this right triangle. Determine whether each equation is correct. So we have this triangle here. Let's take a look at each one. The sine of angle F is equal to 3 over 5. Well, let's take a look at sine of F, which is opposite. The sine is opposite of a hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent of a hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So for the sine, is going to be opposite, which is 15 over hypotenuse, which is 25. And we can actually reduce that to 3 fifths. So this is actually true. Next, we have the cosine of D. Well, we know that the cosine of an angle is given by A over H. So that's the adjacent side. That's going to be 15 over the hypotenuse, which is, again, 25. And it should, according to this formula, should be 3 fifths. And so the answer is actually um, not right. So this is false. And next, we have tangent of angle D. The tangent is given by opposite over adjacent. So that would be 20 over 15. And so that should actually be 4 over 3. And so this is actually false again. Next, we have the cosine of F. The cosine is actually adjacent. So that will be 20 over hypotenuse 25. And it should be 4 over 5. So this is actually true. The sine of D is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 20 over 25. And that's also true, 4 fifths. And finally, tangent of F. That's um, opposite, which is 15 over adjacent, which is 20. That should be 3 over 5. So this one is um, oh, 3 over 4. So this one is actually false. And that's the end of the problem. Number 22, Justin proves that any point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. His proof is shown. And let's take a look at the given. JK is perpendicular bisector of LM. So here we have a perpendicular bisector. And we want to prove that LP is equal to MP, or congruent. And so the first step is given. And next step is that KL is congruent to KM. And that should be by the definition of perpendicular bisector because it cuts the segment into two equal parts. Next, we have angle PKL is congruent to angle PKM. So those two, um, because we are given that this is a right angle and therefore the other side must also be a right angle, that's the definition of congruent uh, of, of right angles. Next, we have KP is congruent to KP, and that's a reflexive property, any angle uh, side is congruent to itself. So based on what we have so far, we have identified a side, an angle, and a side. So therefore, those two triangles on the left, one and two, are actually congruent by the side angle side um, triangle congruence. And therefore, because those two triangles are congruent, we can say that finally, this last side right here, that are corresponding are congruent to each other, and the reason is CPCTC, which means corresponding parts of 
um, congruent triangles are congruent? So the answer is part C. Number 23, triangle one has an angle that measures 42 degrees and an angle that measures 50. Triangle two has an angle that measures 42 and an angle measure B. And B is not equal to 50 degrees. So they wanna know based on the information, Johnny claims that triangle one and triangle two cannot be similar. And let's go ahead and do a sketch. Um, and what value of B in degrees will refute Johnny's claim. So let's go ahead and draw the first triangle, which has a 50 and a 42. And the second triangle has 42 and a B. So this is triangle one and this is triangle two. Well, in the first, tri in the first triangle, we know that the remaining angle is going to be 180 minus 50 minus 42, that will be a total of 88 degrees. So this is 88 degrees for the remaining. And so in order for Johnny's claim to be true, this um, angle right here is going to, uh, the angle B, because we are stating that B is not 50 degrees. So if B is not 50, then that means the other one must be 50 and therefore B needs to be the same as 88. So B has to equal 88 degree in order for Johnny's claim to be true that the two triangles will be similar um, by angle-angle similarity. So therefore B equals 88. Number 24, Miguel designs a skateboard ramp shown in the diagram. And we are asked to find the height of the, tramp, the ramp, which is H, labeled H in inches. Round your answer to the nearest whole inches. So we're going to solve, based on this angle, the sides that are given, we know that this side is opposite, and then we have hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse, that would be the sine. So we have sine of 18 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is H over hypotenuse of 100. Cross multiplying, I have h equals 100 times the sine of 18 degrees, which is approximately 31 inches. And so that is um, the answer. I'm just going to double check. So yes, about 31 inches. And that is the answer for the height. Number 25, consider this right triangle. Determine whether each expression can be used to find the length of side AB. So side AB in this case is actually the hypotenuse. And um, so we're going to actually take a look at how we can solve for the angle. So if we have the sine of angle B, we would have 24 over AB, which is the hypotenuse. And so cross multiplying, I would have AB times the sine of B is equal to 24. So to solve for AB, I'm going to dis divide by sine of B. So AB would equal to 24 over the sine of B. And that would be actually one way. So we found the answer that is going to help us. So this one is a yes. And then if we actually try to find it using angle A, because that's what some of the other ones, this uh, answer choices involve A. Then let's take a look at how we solve, we can solve um, using angle A. So notice that we are given, uh, we're going to look for the hypotenuse, so we can use either sine or cosine. So let's use the cosine of angle A. So angle A, cosine is 24, which is adjacent, 24 over hypotenuse is AB. <clears throat> cross multiplying and we have 24 equals um, the AB times cosine of A. So AB is actually going to equal to 24 divided by the cosine of A. And that unfortunately is not on the list. So we can look for um, another way of solving. So let's use 
the opposite side instead of adjacent. So we're going to have sine of A, which is opposite, that would be 7 over AB, and cross multiply again and solve for AB. We have 7 is equal to AB sine of A. So AB is actually equal to 7 divided by the sine of A. And that is also actually on the list. So um, I think those are all the other, um, all of the possible answers. So we have two yes, and that would be a no for these two. Number 26, let sine of 30 equal to 1 half. Find an angle measure in degrees for the cosine of 1 half. So if we know that the cosine of theta is equal to 1 half, then we have to draw this triangle that's going to give us the ratio of 1 half um, because we know that it's going to involve 1 and 2. We know that this is actually going to be a special triangle of 30, 60, 90, which means we have the sides labeled 1, 2, and radical 3. So based on this, um, sine of 30 is going to give us 1 half. So the sine of 30 degree will give us 1 half. So this is the given information. Using that, we can obtain the graph in this uh, drawing. So we know that the, the sine is um, 30. And we have a theorem that says the sine of one angle is the cosine. So the sine of 30 is actually equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. So um, we know that, again, the sine of 30 is the cosine of the complementary, which means we learned this in IM2, um, 30, 90 minus 30, which it means the cosine of 60 degree. So that means for us to get the cosine of an angle, we have to get the cosine of 60 to give us the 1 half. So the answer is angle 60 will be the cosine. That will give us 1 half. Number 27, consider this right triangle. Find the length of BC. And BC is here. We're going to label it. And we're going to call it X to the nearest tenth. So based on the angle and the two sides that are given, we have opposite and hypotenuse. So that clearly gives us sine of 25 degrees. So sine of 25 will give us x over 18. Cross multiplying, I will have x is equal to 18 times the sine of 25 degree, which gives us approximately 7.6 units square. And that's what the missing link is. Number 28, consider this right triangle. Again, this problem is very similar to the one that we just did earlier. Um, we are asked to determine if AB uh, can be found using these setups. So it actually um, is uh, easier if we're just going to set up each one of them that has the actual answer. So we can determine if each one of them is a, a, a yes. So first, we're going to take a look at the cosine of A. So cosine of A is opposite, which is 14, over hypotenuse AB. And we're going to solve for AB. So it turns out that 14 equals AB times the cosine of A. So AB is actually equal to 14 over cosine of A. And so that is not, um, is not on the list. So we don't see anything here that's on this list. So let's try the sine of B. So the sine of B is actually equal to the opposite, which is 48 over AB. Again, cross multiplying, I have 48 equals AB times the sine of B. To solve for AB, I'm going to divide um, sine B of both sides. So AB is going to equal to 48 over the sine of B. And that is actually a true um, answer. So that one is a yes. Next, we're going to look for tangent of B. The tangent of B is the opposite, which is 48 over adjacent, which is 14. So to find, um, we actually cannot find uh, B, tangent of B in this relationship right here. We have 48 equals 
tangent of b, so we're not going to be able to find this one. So let's go ahead and try using um, So let's try involving because we need to solve for a b. So we need to set up something that involves a b. So let's try um, cosine of actually let's try um, I don't think there's anything else to try because notice that a the tangent of a and b will only involve the two sides that are given which means it does not involve the hypotenuse, which is what we're trying to solve. So therefore, in order for us to set up the correct way, we have to involve a, b, which means it has to be hypotenuse. So tangent cannot be used to solve for any one of them. And we already uh, said that sine of b is the answer. And when we set up for cosine of a, it does not look like um, the answer. So one of only Actually, we're going to try solving for the cosine. So let's find the cosine of angle A. So the cosine of angle A, let's double check, is actually, I set it up wrong here. Cosine of A should actually be 48 over um, AB. So it's actually 48. So it turns out that the cosine of AB, um, cosine of A actually is correct. So we have two yes answers. I apologize for my mistake. So it should be 48 over cosine of A. So we have two yes answers and two no's. So once again, because we cannot use tangent because that would only involve the opposite and the adjacent side, it does not involve the hypotenuse. So in order for us to find um, AB, we have to involve the hypotenuse. So that cannot be tangent uh, A or B. End of the problem. Number 29. Jose is designing a handrail for a staircase and needs to determine that what the length of the handrail uh, will be. So if we call this x right here, the handrail, that we, the actual length, the top of the uh, handrail will be 6 feet. So we have the triangle already labeled here. It will be at 6 feet here, and the angle is 23.5. Find the length in feet. So based on this picture here, the um, angle, 23.5 and the two sides that are given, that will be opposite and hypotenuse. So that will be a sine. Sine of 23.5 is equal to 6 over x cross multiplying. And I have x times the sine of 23.5 equals 6. And then x equal to 6 over the sine of 23.5 degrees, which is approximately 15 feet. So that will be the length of the rail. Number 30, triangle ABC is similar to triangle um, DEF. And so let's look at what we need to do. Choose all angles that have a sine of uh, 5 or 13. So we're going to look at the ratios. So let's take a look at um, the sine of angle A. Sine of angle A is going to be... 5, which is opposite, over 13. And so the side that is going to have the same ratio should be the one that is uh, corresponding to A, which means A and D are corresponding. So we have A and we should have D that is corresponding. And I think that is the only one that is going to be. And let's actually try for. So, yeah, so then angle, angle D is the only one that's going to be corresponding to A. And so those are the two angles that are corresponding. 31, consider this right triangle. Find the length of the side CA to the nearest 10. And that is looking for this side right here. So based on that, it's going to be um, on the angle opposite and adjacent. That will be tangent of 28 degrees, which is 4 over x. So opposite over adjacent. Cross multiplying, I have x times tangent of 28 is equal to 4. And then x is 4 over tangent of 28 degrees, which is approximately 7.5. And that is the answer to the nearest tenth.
Number 32, Gabby climbs 138 feet to the top of the Freedom Monument. She looks down and sees her friend who is standing at point B in the diagram. So we have a figure of the representation of the case. Find the measure of angle depression, angle A right here, round to the nearest whole degree. So based on this, we have um, the angle A, which is uh, opposite side and adjacent side. So that will be tangent of angle A is equal to 138 opposite side over adjacent, 54. So we have A equals taking the inverse of both sides. That will get rid of the tangent. So tangent inverse of both sides. That's going to cancel out the tangent. So we have tangent inverse of 138 over 54, which gives us the angle of approximately 69 degrees. So this angle of depression is 69 degrees. And number 33, Celine wants to determine the height X of a nearby tree. She stands 40 feet from the base of the tree. The measure of the angle of elevations is from the top is 42 degrees. So let's go ahead and draw the representation of this case. This uh, tree is forming um, an angle, a triangle, and the angle of elevation is looking up is 42 degrees right here. And so that means this is 48 degree, the dep angle of depression. We have the height of the tree, which is unknown. We have um, Celine standing 40 feet away from the base of the tree. And so based on this case, we have the tangent of 42 degrees is given by x over 40. Cross multiplying, I have x equals 40 times tangent of 42. And that will be approximately, uh, actually, tangent of 40 tangent of 42 is already there. Uh, and then next, we can use also the tangent of the complementary angle, the depression, angle of depression, 48 is equal to 40 over x. Cross multiplying, I have x times tangent of 48 is equal to 40. So x is equal to 40 over tangent of 48. And that's the other way that you can solve. So that is found over here for letter F. So those are the two methods that you can use to solve for the height of the, uh, the tree. And that is the end of day five.